It's the Men in Blazers Night of a Thousand Stars! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, our first guest. Yes. One of the most talked about athlete acquisitions of the summer. It's not Luke Shaw. <laughs> Joining another bona fide superstar on a team hungry for glory. I'm not talking about Lukaku Kukuku joining Stephen Naismith at Everton. This man is a three-time NBA All-Star, an Olympic gold medalist, one of the newest members of America's Darlings, the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Kevin Love. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Excited. How excited are you, first of all, to be the first ever massive celebrity athlete guest to make your entrance to the crappiest theme tune ever written in the history of sports media? Well, I can see that I'm uh, a little overdressed. Yeah. I've got to do my button up over there. It's very good. Well, so I can good. smell the axe. You guys have beer, I have water. That's why I am uptight and you guys are loose. Okay, let's do this. It's so good. Anyway, let's, let's keep it great. You are a man of style, yep. Kevin Love. The reason you are dressed so well today, you've been, uh, you've been down in Washington, D.C. I have, yes. I've been at the, uh, the White House. I did a PSA for a sexual assault called It's On Us. So I was there. Uh, being... Uh, Part of that, uh, President Obama, Vice President Biden. It was uh, it was quite a bit of fun, but I'm here to uh, talk a little footy. So, well, wow, that's so good. Uh, it, you're a man of style. GQ did an interview with you recently. You described your own style as having a rugged swag feel. <laughs> I'm asking this for Rog. What does that mean, Kevin? Rugged swag field. Define that for us. They had a GQ, mind yeah. you, had asked that question, and I didn't uh, particularly know how to answer it. I just knew that... Um, that just came to you. It just... It really just came to me. I'm from the Pacific Northwest. I have, you know, the lumberjack feel. I was in Minnesota for the past six years. Now in Cleveland, they have... Was it Paul Bunyan? So I figured that <laughs> the rugged swag feel kind of... Uh, fit me well, I don't know. Yeah, you got it, it's a good one. You also yeah, tagged thanks. on to that interview, you said I have a colour me bad beard. As evidence. Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> that was in 09 though, so well, I guess that was 08, the game was 09. It's a good one. Yeah. You know, I read about you in doing my research that as a seventh grader, as a seventh grader, you could dunk a basketball, Kevin. Now, I'm a man who's obsessed, as many of our listeners know, with every life has a, uh, has a high point. And it's like, <laughs> what was yours? After which, it's right now. <laughs> Sixth grade when I dunked a basketball. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, you know, I, 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 I mean, so every, every life has a, a moment where you, you, you I'm not sure if you recognize it or not, but life is not going to get any better than that. And I want to ask you, seriously, as a 12 or 13 year old, when you could dunk a basketball and you essentially had magical powers akin to Peter Parker realizing he could like lift the car. Everything since then has been a major letdown, yes. <laughs> how, how, how That's it, what he wants to hear. How, 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 did it, how did it feel like to be able to do something so aspirational, so young? Uh, it was, uh, man, uh, especially being a, being a white boy, being able to get up there and dunk it. And <laughs> when I was 13, 14 years old, it was uh, gratifying because that was something that uh, I'd always wanted to do now that I, I knew that I was there. I had to graduate from the one hand, kind of toilet bowl dunk, and to getting it clean into the two hand, and so on and so forth, and um, I kind of stopped there, unfortunately. So, <laughs> that box is yet to be ticked by me. Did you ever think of playing in goal, or did anybody ever say to you, That's like, they go used and to play in goal? in youth soccer. Of course they did! And because... That long time, number, number one rule of American soccer coaching, the big guy 
going go. <laughs> Anytime I moved up and I was a striker, I toe punted the shit out of the ball. I'm, I'm still allowed to say shit. Yes, right? you are. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> okay. And I would, you know, just it would be a knuckleball. I'd miss the goal by. Yeah. Quite a bit. Were you good in goal? No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. We're, 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 we are interested because th there's always that theory that if America, this great country in which we are privileged to live, yep. <laughs> empowered its elite athletes to play soccer instead of gravitating towards sports on the decline, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, fair enough, then the, then the US would win the World Cup sooner than like 2018 or 2022. If they stop putting the big guy in goal, What's your take on that theory? I mean, we have big enough guys that we can put a, uh, we can put a big guy in goal. We'll get, uh, I mean, who's, who would you guys like to see in goal from the NBA? LeBron? LeBron. 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 Gre <laughs> Dennis Rod, oh, nice. That is a great call. Whoever we'll shouted that out has just won the World Cup he in might, 2018. Yeah. We're on it. Maybe on the, yeah. Dennis Rodman would make it through a soccer game, an international soccer game, for about two minutes before being red carded. He wouldn't make it through. He's, he's the hoop solo of, uh, of <laughs> the... <laughs> <laughs> Too soon. Let me, Definitely too soon. Let me ask you a question. You are... <laughs> Kevin Love. Kevin Love, where, where do we possibly go from here? Yeah, do, well, well, there's only one place we can go from here. Yeah. You are an Arsenal fan. Yeah. Well, Kevin Love, mixed, do, mixed. do you relish a little pain in your life? Is there a little, tiny little Mother Teresa that lies within that enormous body of yours, Kevin Love? We're off to an okay start. I mean, I had to, I was kind of, as we mentioned before we came up, before we came on the show, was that yeah. I was kind of a late adopter to the Arsenal family. Yeah. So in you know even before 2012, uh, my lady, we, we went to the uh, the stadium at Emirates, and I got to. God, I have to stop I didn't saying get to my go lady. It's such a cool thing to say, my lady. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. Say that. It's he so good. Say I love that. my lady. Keep on going. And uh, you know she had worked uh, you know over in the London area and. You know, that became her team about seven, eight years ago. So I became an, an Arsenal fan from there. But mind you, today, by a wicked twist of fate, when I was at the White House, we're all circling up, trying to, you know, we're about to meet the president, the vice president. And, you know, this, this handsome gentleman who didn't have a hair out of place, uh, had an Aussie accent to him, uh, started talking to me. I said, oh, well, you know, what part of Texas are you from? And we got to talking about some different stuff. And he goes, oh, well, I'm Andrew Wilson, the CEO of EA Sports. Wow. I said, what a crazy, crazy world, a small world we live in. I'm going up uh -huh. to see the new FIFA game, to play the new FIFA game, to be a part of this whole thing. And to meet the men in blazers. To meet the men in blazers. <laughs> and he, he was and there to brief the president said, on he ISIS. Said, <laughs> he said, if they, if they give you any shit, <laughs> Tell them that the boss is watching. Oh, okay. We will, uh, we will behave ourselves. See, I figured that it's perfect for an NBA player to be an Arsenal fan. Because how quickly, when after a basket is scored at one end, or after one team looks like they're about to score a basket, how quickly in transition could another team get all the way up the other end and score at the other end? Like, I don't know, four seconds. With LeBron, with LeBron, like, three seconds. Because no team in history has conspired to be scored against I know for more happy. promises of attacking opportunity than Arsenal Football Club. I know it would make you happy. Is if Mr. Wilson ends up sending me some Chelsea swag, huh? Yes, we love it. Chelsea fans. You got Chelsea fans in here? We'll take anyone. <laughs> that was weak. We have one up closer. Come to the shed and we'll welcome you. It's a hospitable family club. You just need to turn up wearing blue and everyone's welcome at Stamford Bridge. Unless you're bald, apparently. Um, so, big career move. You've gone to the Cavs. Um, read an interview with you back when you were with the Timberwolves. 
and you were asked who was the best video gamer in the Wolves locker room, and you said, if I say it's myself, they'll all laugh at me. But can you talk about the pressure you feel to fit into a new locker room's video game culture? Because there must be <laughs> video game culture in a new locker room. Video game, the video game culture in the NBA and in sports is a real thing. Uh, it's, it gets very intense, and when I was growing up, when I was part of the uh, younger demographic, there were many broken systems and broken controllers, because I was... <laughs> I would get infuriated when my older brother would beat me in just about every single game. And, uh, but when we actually played real sports, it was kind of the other way around, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, but the video game culture, yeah, it's a real thing. Uh, if I would have said I was the best gamer, uh, especially when it came to FIFA, mind you, um, they all would have laughed at me. <laughs> I mean, I go back, I'm like the generation where it was like, you know, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, all the way up through, uh, you know, I, we, I had the Dreamcast, I had the, so if we're playing like, you know, various different games, you know, I understand, but um, EA Sports FIFA, if I was to say I was the best player on my team, yeah, they, they would probably laugh at me and they would say, yeah, go ahead and pick Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're now with a new team, LeBron James. You can tell that he watches football. It looks like he's just gone to Wayne Rooney's barber. <laughs> here's, here's a question that many of us are asking. Does he know that he owns a chunk of Liverpool Football Club? Is he aware of that? Yes, why do you ask? <laughs> I can see there's a Liverpool fan. I think Arsenal will be ditched, Dave. Chelsea, the swag will arrive. I see a Liverpool fan in the making. Yeah. Yeah, it could be, it could happen. Could happen. So we talk a lot about football as a battle between the forces of big and the forces of small, the bigs and the smalls. And there's nothing in football this summer. France, Valbuena, Tuffer, smalls and talls working together. It's like perfect harmony. Right. This is something that basketball has had down for a long time. But my question for you, is there a small in the NBA who plays like a tall? and a tall who plays like a small. <laughs> and if you want to add big bottoms or small bottoms to either of those categories, you're welcome. Well, yeah, naturally I could say uh, Russell Westbrook. He uh, definitely is a combo guard guy that can play many positions. Uh, you know, he's a guy that kind of transcends the, the point guard position. Nobody has seen somebody that athletic at, at the point guard. So a small that plays tall, I'd probably say him. I mean, he's uh, uh, just an unbelievable athlete that could probably play uh, a number of sports. And now a tall that plays small. Any suggestions? Hey, Scalabrini is a good player. I used to, when I first came to America, I lived in Orlando, Florida, and I went to the first ever Orlando Magic game. And our starting center was a man named Mark Akers. And the first time I was watching in practice, I saw Sam Vincent, who can't have been taller than 6'1", dunking over Mark Akers. He certainly played like a small. That was, when, what, you said that was 89? Yeah, that was that one was of the worst, league. that was expansion franchise basketball. Yeah. yeah. And then week after I arrived in America, I moved to Chicago and there was a big tele all channel press conference and it was Michael Jordan retiring from basketball. <laughs> and I just became in awe of Lou Longley. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Still the guy. Nice. To me, to. the Peter Crouch of the NBA. <laughs> I, I'm going to be candid. I, I'm going to get personal. We're going to take this down a notch. Yeah. We're going to get personal. To me, I've not known you for very long. You're an articulate man. I've got to say, when you say uh, my lady, that's what I think is really the definition of swag it's style. To say I'm going to start with an saying accent. that. Yeah. But I, I'm going to say to you, and feel free to punch me in the face. <laughs> you, Honestly, feel free to punch him in the face. Thank you. You don't look to me, my definition coming from England, of a Kevin. <laughs> of a Kevin. Let me just say, uh, Kevin, I know you all know this, but I'm a pedantic man. Kevin, etymology, Gaelic. It means gentle birth. <laughs> I don't know you very well, Kevin Love, but I'd imagine that's probably not true. <laughs> but it is, it's a great, 
it, we, weren't, we weren't aware of what a great American name it was until we did some research on great American Kevins. These are the Kevins that we know. Let's take a look at them. Let's roll them right Is now. Is it all? Like... Oh. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon. Oh. Creepy Kevin. Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner, okay, yeah. that's Waterworld. Oh, Spacey. Creepier Kevin. Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey, okay. Oh, Kevin Hart. Overexposed Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> Kevin, what's his name? <laughs> Kevin James. Ginger Kevin. <laughs> Kevin Connolly. And the mug says it all. Federline. Kevin Federline. Federline. Yeah, to, I mean, to be candid, we come from a country it's kind of hanging on by its knees, let's be honest. Thank you, Scotland. <laughs> and Kevin is a proud tradition of Kevins. And football gives us so many Kevins, right, Davo, that we yeah. draw upon as inspiration and role model. Oh, great footballing Kevins. Here we go. Oh. Kevin Kilban? Kilban. Oh, that's Whoa. a moustache. Kevin, Kevin Richardson. Richardson. <laughs> He's a great one. A great oh, Kevin. Sheedy. God. Yeah. Campbell. Campbell. Godder. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, De Bruyne, De Pig, Bruyne. Pig Farmer. De Bruyne, <laughs> De Bruyne. Oh, Prince Boateng. Kevin, Prince yeah, Boateng. another Kevin. Super Kev. Oh, Super Kev. If you grew up in England, Kevin Love, you would be called R. Kev. R. Kev. That's what they call it. They wouldn't call Kevin Love, they call it R. Kev. R. Kev, R. Kev with, R. Kev. A, with a big dunk. Yeah. Do you feel... I, I, I gotta, I'm gonna under, undermine my. I love America for many reasons. I love America because it's the country that's given us great names. Billy Ocean, best name ever. Let's hear it for Billy, Billy Ocean. Ocean. That's, there's no better name than Billy Ocean. Well, there is. God Shammer God. That's a good name. That's a great name. And Coco Crisp. I think Coco oh, Crisp. Yeah. That's a good name. There but you go. We have names that we. Like, I wish that my name was Hamish. I always wish Hamish Davish. Would have been a great name. Rog, you have a name you wish. I, I hate the name Rog. I didn't hate it till this afternoon at three o'clock. <laughs> but I've got to tell you, I'm shamed to be called Roger today. I'd like, yeah. I wish my name was Reuben. Reuben Bennett. Reuben. That would be a good one. So, Kevin, have you ever had a name? Have you ever thought, I wish I could have another name in front of love? <laughs> I, re I really had this name. Um, another. What's your middle name? Wesley. That's I, a good name. I, I, love, I actually love my name. Wes yeah, Unsell. Wes Unsell. Amazing yeah. man. Wesley Amazing Love. Man. That's a great Kevin name. Kevin Wesley Love, yeah. There's a soul album in Wesley Love. <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm thinking. Maybe a country album as well. It could be both. It could be a, a combo. Big Love. Yeah. We thought Angelo would be a good name. Angelo, like he's Angelo, an, like, an Irish soul got, singer. Angelo Love. Angelo Love. Yeah, could have been that. Puppy Love. Is it literally, do you feel like a Kevin? Or is it a name that you've I always had? I think Kevin's before? a great name, especially in, uh, at least in, in my sport, there's, there's, you know, Durant, Garnett, there's me, there's... <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's Mikhail, Mikhail, there's Kevin Johnson, one. he's a mayor, I mean... Kevin KJ. Johnson. KJ, I like yeah. that. KJ, yeah. cool. Okay, uh, so basically what you're saying is our theory about Kevin not being a huge American name is completely and utterly crap. <laughs> In so many words, yes. Pretty much, pretty much par for the course. So you excited about FIFA, excited about the new game? Yeah, I was just playing it back there. I was trying to get uh, Joe on the sticks, but uh, he was playing with his team, Cameroon, and oh, I was well. playing with the you know, US team. Okay, well we have and no idea who's coming up next, so we don't know who you're talking about. Don't know who you're talking about. Spoiler alert, sorry guys. Uh, and he's talking about bad. Joe Pesci, who's backstage. Yeah, Joe Pesci. Yeah. He's a massive, massive, massive FIFA, FIFA player. player. I'm really acting like you guys. Rosie. I walked in here, I had no idea. That's my bad, everybody. Yeah. Seriously, okay. my sincerest um, apologies. Looking forward to it. Kevin Love, oh, good Kev. luck. Oh, Kev. Oh, Kev. Good luck oh, this Kev. season in Cleveland. That's going to be Thank you. one Thank you. hell of a franchise. Thank you. Thank you for not only coming here today, but the important work you're doing down in Washington, D.C., that is fantastic, the fact that you care enough about that to go and do it. Thank you for your support of FIFA. Ladies and gentlemen, Kevin Love! Thank you. Thank you.